I'm a huge housewives connoisseur. There's a lot of things I want to clear up. This is the real story. Things at the reunion that surprised you. She had said, I made everybody wait at the reunion for two hours. I can't believe how proficient she is at lying. I feel really, really hurt by Kyle. Someone leaked the text message. It was not me. Who was it? What does it rhyme with? They're the ones that had the text message. Are you kidding me? You're throwing yourself into the lion's den. Is it scripted? I wish. Okay, we're we're live. We're here. I'm going to say, and I'm a huge housewives connoisseur, that you have the best style. Thanks, on, Lauren. I mean, I know you hear that a lot. Like it. You are a bigger brat than me about mm. style. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, what do you think, Michael? Uh, no, I think your style is phenomenal. I it's like when someone rat. has been thoughtful putting something together. We know. But as not taking something off of a rack and been like, this is what the brand put together on a runway show. Right. That sounds a little snobbish when I say it. but No, but it doesn't. But He's you know such a brat. Absolutely. You know yeah. what he told me? Like, probably like three years ago, he goes, I can't be next to you if you're going to wear that. You have to get it tailored. Oh, I love that. Well, because, you know, I have a rule. I don't know if I want to say it, but say I'm already just going to get torn apart. See, you thought the audience was going to tear you apart if you said something wrong, but this is going to be me getting torn apart. I don't like... When anyone, I won't even say women, when anyone puts an ensemble together where it's like baggy, baggy. I feel if you're going to do a baggy top, you do a tight bottom. If you do a tight top, you do a bag, like vice versa or <laughs> tight. Like I think tight tight's okay, actually. But I, I understand you know what, what you're saying. saying. Like, so she I puts do. together these big baggy things. I'm like, where's the figure here? I can't see anything. Yeah, What's going that's on? a very male. My husband's the same way. And I understand it yeah. because, I mean, your wife has a gorgeous figure and yeah, you want to see it. it. There are those exceptions though where it's it's a look and it's a cool look i mean there's a menswear look you know where you've got a baggy suit you know yeah. or baggy trousers and you know the row does it a lot i love the row it's like a, becoming a classic now yeah and i think that you can i think even a woman can wear that and you can still see the figure but don't you feel like you still have to get it tailored well, Somewhat. I think some things you do need to get tailored. I'm big on fit. Big. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the designers or clothes that I wear, um, and really I choose designers sometimes because of the tailoring, but I think the fit is, it's everything. It's important. How much goes into what you plan? Because it's not like you just rolled out of bed and like went in your closet. This is <laughs> like thought out. It's almost like an art project, a creative outlet for you. Totally. And I enjoy it. So, um, it really depends on the day. Um, you know, a lot of thought goes into it. Sometimes it's quick and easy. You know, I have the idea in my head and I'm like, okay, I want to do this. And then I just kind of put it together. Um, it's not something that takes hours upon hours because it's not my first rodeo. You know, I'm used to this. And, I, and like I said, I enjoy it. So I'm always thinking about clothes and outfits and things. Um, but it definitely takes time. It's not a joke. I mean, even down to like your loungewear look with like the glasses. Oh, I love you, Lauren. I love I'm it. I love you, that you. style. I notice all of it. You do. I love it. See, I appreciate someone that appreciates it. It's a detail. Do you know what I mean? Because, yeah, people don't really realize that genuinely every little piece that I put, even down to a pinky ring, is thought. It's thought about. I think that what I like about it is that it's so much effort to look effortless. Oh, Do you know what I mean? So well said. Like, and I think it, anything like that, even if you build a business, it's so much effort to make it effortless. And I think people don't realize that. I think we well, appreciate any time people put their own creativity into anything they're passionate about and it's executed well. Does it make sense? Like it could be like, any, it could be anything. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I agree. I feel the same way. And I think um, trying to, I like when things are effortless. So, you know, you can actually be putting a lot of effort into something, but it looks effortless. And I think that's the goal. And it's usually the goal for me. I want to sort of walk the audience through your story and go back before Housewives, even back before PK. Oh, oh. I can't even remember oh. those days. But tell us about how you grew up. Have you always had an eye for creativity and design? Like, what was your childhood like? So I grew up in a very traditional home. My parents are not American, so it was a very international home. Um, I've always enjoyed fashion. I remember when I was old enough and, 
you know, I was one of those girls that developed early on. So I had a body, you know, of an 18 year old girl at like 11, 12. My poor dad. Um, So I used to go into my mother's closet and she had great fashion. She had a great figure. And I used to go to middle school, like sixth grade, wearing my mother's clothes. But I would go in wearing something that she would wear like in the evening. And my teachers would always comment like, Dorit, you know, wow, you really, (laughs) you really love to get dressed up. Um, So I've always enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say that from a little girl, I always knew I wanted to go into fashion. It was just something I enjoyed. And I liked, I liked to put my spin on things. So I would sew a patch on something or put safety pins or, um, put a, a, you know, a glove. I, I kind of would... I used my creativity to make it my own. And I think I still try to do that today. What were you like before you met PK? Well, um, goodness, I was engaged twice before PK. Oh, popular. Oh, goodness. Well, engaged, never married? Never married. Okay, called him Always up. walked away. Yeah, I was dubbed Sheik. the runaway bride. I love it. Yeah, I God, um, I should have got some engagements too before late, I met you. Lauren. you know, <laughs> too late. <laughs> so you too were late. engaged twice. I was engaged twice. Listen, I spent um, about nine years in Europe, living in Italy. Um, right after university, college, I went to Italy. It was actually okay. I'm going to back up, um, and you know, my husband's here, and me being long-winded, it's it's a real thing. We're so. on a podcast. Be long-winded. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, do long-winded. Go. Um, so where do I start? Before PK, um, what was I like? Um, I had a desire to see the world. You know, I always did from a very young age. I loved different cultures and languages, and I grew up in a house with, you know, many different languages. So uh, I had a draw to it. Um I decided second year in college that I wanted to study abroad. So I decided to go to Italy and I ended up staying an additional semester, took a semester off of college and I worked in Italy and I fell in love with Italy, everything about it, especially the fashion. And then um, midway through the second semester, I got a phone call from my mother that my father had gone in with a tummy ache and he ended up having his gall butt gallbladder removed and then his heart dropped and long story short he had to have open heart surgery so I raced back home um I got back into college and he's okay thank god but it brought me back to America and I always had this kind of longing for Italy like I knew I would go back there my last year of college uh I was on vacation and I met some people um who we stayed in touch with. I had about six months left until I graduated. And um, towards the end of finishing college, I got a phone call saying, I'm going, um, this is a friend of mine. He had, his father had a swimwear business in Italy. And he said, I'm going back to take over the family business and we're looking to start an international marketing division. And we need an English speaking person. My degree is in marketing, advertising and communications. So I decided to go work in Italy. Um, I thought what would be six months or a year and learning Italian, it ended up being nine years that I was there, almost a decade. Where, where in Italy? I was all over. Okay. So I was in Florence. I was in Rome. I was in um, Milan for a bit. I was on the Amalfi Coast. And you speak six languages, right? Five. Five. Okay. Yes. But this is, I feel like they don't show this on the show. I, I watched the show and I had no idea that you lived there for nine years. That's a long time. I know. Like, of course, the cultures are going to, you're going to be immersed in that. I know. Exactly. And also how much it's affected just me as a person, who I am, my style. Totally. The way I am. I mean, you spend your 20s, essentially, which is what I did in another country, in Europe. You know, I think with regards to the show, and the cast, they like to, to poke fun and tease, right? So if we're in another country, it's like, oh, Dorit's speaking another language or so on. It's a part of who I am. It's what I, I enjoy. But really my background and who I am and what, how I became who I am is not something that 
the show ever really covered. If not in I depth. could speak five other languages, you better bet your ass that I would be speaking those languages in the country when I'm there. Well, yeah. Like, but I don't, even outside the country. I mean, if I if I meet an Italian or I have the opportunity to speak a language. You could um, like brush up on it, too. I love it, Lauren. Yeah, I, love I don't it. blame you. I yeah, love one it. of our best friends went abroad and, and went to Paris and then bounced around and he speaks fluent French. He does the travel. same thing yeah. that you do. Like he, he, wherever he can speak it, he's like dying to speak yeah, it. Yeah, I always envy it because I'm like, man, it's so cool to just be able to like transition to that. Yeah, Whenever it is we cool. travel with him, it's, it's fun because you can just, he can automatically so start communicating with the local. Well, that was one of the reasons why I loved, I was so drawn to learning different languages because I love to travel and oh. I thought to be able to go places and to communicate. And when I had first gotten to Italy, when I took this job, it was the first time in my life where I was with people that I couldn't communicate. I didn't know what they were saying and I couldn't say anything. I mean, God, PK, <laughs> you would have loved that. I was forced not to speak, you know, but I, <laughs> and PK's here. So um, Michael's the speaker in our relationship. Oh, Is you he fucking kidding me? You oh. talk so much. I've never seen anything. Like Taylor. It. Really? I yeah. don't know. I think it's like we I you mean, share I do talk a lot. You do. I don't but... speak before 10 a.m. Oh, I love that. I'm just that. saying, PK. Wait, do you have kids, Lauren? Yeah. Four okay. I try not to speak. Four, four and <laughs> almost two. That's yeah. hysterical. I'd really try to. I'm just like, it's too intense. I need coffee. I know. No, I listen. I'm not a big, huge morning person myself. I okay, mean, yeah, give me a minute. To be. I know. Feel me up before you fuck me. I got one speed. It's like, go. I wake up. I'm ready to, I'm ready to come. I talk. I listen. That's, yeah, that's our daughter. Um. But anyway, back to languages. No, I love it. I mean, I still, I want to learn as many as I can. Um. And one of the, so in, while I was in Italy, I started working for this uh, swimwear resort wear company. And one of their goals was to expand and sell abroad. So I, I got involved in the manufacturing and the design and the, the sales because in fashion and in Europe, especially, um, you know, there's a part of the year where you're focused on manufacturing and then a part, they all overlap. And then a part where you're on design. So I was... Slowly but surely, I became a part of every every facet of the business. I When I moved back to the States, I opened my own company, Dury International, which was a swimwear resort wear brand. It is this. Are you simultaneously meeting PK? Are you guys already married at this Still point? Still haven't met PK. Still haven't met him yet. Yes. So I you're, lived, you're an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Like, entrepreneur through, and, through and through. Through and through. Yeah. Yep. Started my own business. And in fact, it's a really funny story. Um, this is how you know, the stars were aligned when Pika and I met. We met, um, I think I had been back from Italy about three or four years. So I had already um, finished my second engagement. I had uh, two engagements before PK. Third Both, time's a charm. Third time's a charm, <laughs> exactly. And I was never, I wasn't that girl that was desperate to get married. I just... That makes you, but they want you more though. When you're not desperate probably, to get married, they want you more. Probably, Yeah. yes. Well, I... I I loved life. I wanted to experience. I wanted to have a full life. And as far as kids, it was like, if it's in the cards, I knew I'd be a great mom, but I didn't want to get married just to get married. I wanted to get married forever. When you met him, did you like him immediately? It's not. When I met PK, right, I had just, it was a year since I'd broken off my second engagement. I was not interested in really meeting men and so on. That's what I mean where it wasn't like I was out there looking for dating or any, looking to date or anything like that. So, but there was great banter. So I liked him immediately. Um, but he was going through a divorce, had three children. I was the girl about town in New York City and Manhattan living my best life. I had a successful business, so on and so forth. Um, but PK part of it, it was probably two months because he was living on the West Coast at the time. And we had had a couple of dates with like friends because we had some mutual friends in common. And when we finally went on our first date, he took me to um, Jersey Boys. He took me to the Jersey Boys. We had the best time. And really from that night, we were inseparable. It was like I knew he was the one. I may not have known he was the one, but I knew there was something distinctly different than anyone else the way I felt he it was like I'd known him my whole life did you know that you wanted kids with him right away or did that take no it no. took time no I think it was about three months um 
three months into it, I knew I was in love. And okay, well, three months into our dating, I knew um, I knew I was in love, but it was complicated because, like I said, you know, he was going through a divorce. He had three children. It was not an ideal situation. I remember saying. Um, six months into our relationship, he was moving back to New York and we decided to move in together. And here I am, 35 years old, and I was nervous to tell my parents that I was dating him and that I was moving in with him. And this is like what a traditional family that I was raised by because here I am, I'm thinking my parents are going to be like, oh, you're, you know, marrying, not marrying, but you're... um, Moving in. Yeah, you're moving in with a guy that's got a lot of baggage and they just, you know, they want the best for me and so on and so forth. My parents ended up falling in love with him. Um, But that's PK. So I had already had my own business. When him and I um, started dating about six months into it, I was filling out some forms for the bank and he was helping me. And he said, what's your registered office address? And I gave it to him and it was his building. So I was paying rent to my future husband without knowing. Nice. Yeah. Nice move. And Perfect for you. Exactly. Yeah, you're like, I don't have to do that anymore. I know. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, I mean, he had since, you know, sold the building and I had moved uh, offices. But the really wild thing is that I'm sure PK and I were within a foot of one another a multitude of times and we never met. Something that is part of my morning every single morning is MWH. And this was created by Melissa Wood. I'm sure you've seen her on Instagram. And this is something that I've just done really organically since we interviewed her. And that is her walking meditation. I have found a mom hack to implement meditation into my day. So I wake up and to get my sunlight, I will grab my son, I'll put him in the stroller, and then I'll do her 16-minute meditation. It's my favorite. You can search walking meditation in the app. It's absolutely lovely, and it's such a great habit stack. I love Melissa Wood Health's platform because everything is designed to strengthen both your mind and your body. She has workouts, meditation, nutrition, lifestyle. Her workouts are like a blend of yoga and Pilates class. Everything's designed to sculpt and build beautiful muscle. I like to use her workouts when I can't get to the gym or I'm traveling. She also has this seven-day reset and renew program. This is a really great place to start. It also has like a week-long nutrition program. This is my absolute favorite app I have on my phone. And she has a code for you. As Melissa says herself, don't trust me, try me. Visit melissawoodhealth.com and use code SKINNY at checkout. You get your first month free off your monthly membership. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A-W-O-O-D-H-E-A-L-T-H.com. You can use code SKINNY for your first month free. The other day, I was in LA getting my hair blown out. I had not seen my hairstylist in a while, and she is like, what are you doing to your hair? I am eating so much meat for tons of aminos. I switched from blonde to brunette. And also I have been supplementing and I'm very serious about my supplements. I do them every single day. And the one that I use is Nutrafol. I specifically like Nutrafol because I feel like they target the root cause. So everything is designed around stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism. And they target the root. Also, I really like how they're drug-free. And Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. They have over a million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair, also with less shedding. After my first baby, I was shedding up a storm, and this has really helped with the shedding. So you go on their site and you take a hair wellness quiz, and they basically personalize a hair health plan based on your specific root causes. I think supplementation is so important, especially when it comes to your hair. Take the first step to visibly thicker and healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code SKINNYHAIR. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code SKINNYHAIR. That's Nutrafol.com promo code SKINNYHAIR. Every single morning, I ask my kids the same question. I'm like, do you want a vitamin? And my kids always say yes. And that is thanks to Haya Health. 
Typical kids' vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They have so much sugar. They have like unhealthy chemicals, gummy junk, just all this crap. But enter Haya. Okay. Zero sugar, zero gummy junk. I've tried them. They are so good. So they're great for picky eaters. I have their multivitamin for kids and I also have their probiotic. I give my kids the multi and the probiotic every morning. Zaza does the pink, Towns does the green. That's their flavor. And I'm just so obsessed with this because basically it's a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies. So think minerals, vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, and folate. I mean, everything is just designed to support your kids' immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, even teeth and bones. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. I personally have seen my kids take this every single day for the last year. It's really fun. It comes with stickers, and I just think it's the best children's vitamin on the market. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. You receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com skinny. You should know this deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash skinny and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. At what point are you guys approached to do this show? And when you are approached, was it like a fuck yeah? Or was it like, oh, uh, let's think about it? Oh my God. I always, we always Lauren. get curious about the reason yeah, why Yeah, I want to know. Oh, I, I love like the reason people decide to do this because you're throwing yourself into the lion's den. I mean, it's amazing for business. Yes, Lauren, I was a week postpartum with Phoenix and PK said um, that he was approached to see if I would do Housewives. Now, the reason why he had just started managing Boy George and George was staying with us in Beverly Hills and this production company had proposed us doing a little pilot, Boy George, his family in America. So we did a little sizzle. And it went out to networks. And so E and Bravo and all of them had seen it. George then got um, a role as a judge on the UK Voice. So it never materialized. But after Bravo, I guess, had seen it or whoever, uh, whoever did, they reached out to PK. They were casting for Housewives for Beverly Hills. And they said, would Dorit be interested in um, interviewing? Anyway, when he came, he approached me. I had said, hell no. Absolutely not. No way. That's not for me. It was like a hard, hard no. Why? I could have seen myself behind the camera, not in front of the camera. I had no desire. There was nothing about it that intrigued me, excited me, that I was drawn to. Not even, I didn't really know much about um, housewife shows. I mean, I'd seen early, early on some episodes, but I wasn't, I wasn't a, Housewives fan or reality TV fan. At this time, who? what were the biggest Housewives franchises at that time? Probably New York and Beverly Hills. Yeah, I think like the so. the original casts? Or is it how far? I'm just trying when to think you about the timing. Got, when you no. were on, was Erica Jane on? She she came the year before me. So was Lisa Yolanda Rana, on? Erica. No, I replaced Yolanda. You replaced Yolanda. Okay, okay. Yeah. It was Rinna, Vanderpump, Erica, Kyle. Um... Who else was there? Uh, oh, Eileen. Oh, yeah. Eileen. Yeah. That was the main so cast. That was, uh, I think she was the following year. I don't okay. know. Maybe she was a friend. She, she wasn't even a full time. So what makes you d decide, you know what, I'm just going to do so, it? Well, this is, so this is the genius of my husband, right? Mm -hmm. um, I said no. Hard, hard, hard no. Then about a week later, he asked me again. And I said, PK, no, it's just not for me. There's no way. Now, we had just moved to California about eight, 10 months before that. We didn't really know very many people. We had a few friends. LA is not very easy, you know, to kind of move and make friends. I had <laughs> now two very small children. Um, and PK said, you know, Dorit, we'll, we'll have a laugh. It'll be fun. We'll meet people. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a few I swear laughs. to you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This yeah. is this is how I approach it. A couple I said, of chuckles here and there. I said, PK, no, it does you know, this is we can meet people any other way. And then this is where the genius of him comes in and he said, Listen, Dury, you know, tons of people interview. I'm sure they're not gonna choose you. Why don't you just at least meet with them? Meet with them. If they offer it to you, then we'll have the conversation. But of course, at that point, 
at, at the point they say to you, you're the new housewife, you're not exactly saying, oh, well, hold on. Let me just discuss it with my husband. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they've kind of, you've got it. They've gotten you excited about doing it now. Well, you just don't realize yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're already there. You're pregnant. You're, uh-huh. you're, you know, yeah. you've already committed to it at that point. But now I realize what he was doing by doing that because, but at the time, what he did is he put me at ease and I just thought, okay, you know what? I'm just going to, it's going through the process and like no pressure. Yeah. Looking back on all of it now, having this like bird's eye perspective, what advice would you give to yourself? Would you still do it? Would you recommend someone would do it? I feel like it's a very complex answer. It's a very loaded answer. And the, the answer is, um, you know, there's no handbook and the experience you have to almost live the experience to be able to understand or give anyone advice. So I couldn't even give someone advice based on my experience. You have to, it's your own experience within it. It's very, very difficult. The only thing I would say through and through is be yourself and not be afraid to have an opinion. There's a lot of things that I learned about myself in a lot of ways that I've grown. Obviously, there's a ton of negative stuff that comes with being on a show like, you know, like Housewives. But, um, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That kind of, you know, I feel like that sort of pertains to Housewives for me anyway. Because it was very difficult. I'm not a confrontational person. Um, you know, I speak from my heart. I don't remember everything that comes out of my mouth. I don't remember every conversation. The details I'm the of every same. Convers- I, I don't remember anything. Well, that's it, Lauren. I would be the worst because I don't remember. Well, that's the way I was until <sighs> you go through it and then you realize you have to actually remember. So it like really makes you, your brain switch. I mean, now when I have any kind of conversations, I... I look at the conversation so differently. I retain it so differently. You become almost trained to. Um, but listen, there's there's a lot of things about Housewives that, um, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, there's, you know, much like with anything, there's a learning curve. And I wouldn't say that if I could go back, I would not do it. I wouldn't even say if I could go back, I'd do it differently. I think things... They just, they are what they are. And I'm a big believer that you can learn from any and all experiences. And that's what I try to do in life, period. Well, it sounds like the pros must outweigh the cons. Just sitting here listening to you, you're a very articulate person. I think you obviously sound very thoughtful. So you wouldn't continue to do this if you didn't find some benefit or enjoyment doing it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, when when you're having a difficult season, or things are difficult or, you know, there's, you know, when when you're not enjoying it, you're not enjoying it. Um, you know, the reunion was difficult. You guys are watching it now. It's, um, I would say the things about, the negatives for me, I think, are um, sometimes, you know, being misunderstood, you know, and the show, because it's an ensemble cast, you know, it's not the Dorit show. So, They don't show all aspects of someone. And I felt over the years like. um, What do you wish they showed more of? Well, you know, I've got a great sense of humor and my husband and I laugh all the time. And I think that, you know, when I meet people, they'll say, I can't believe how funny you are. You know, they don't show that on the show or, um, you know, when I first started the thing about the way I speak, she's putting on a fake accent. I mean, that was just shocking to me. You know, I, I, I never, I never thought about it that way. I've never been accused of that, you know, and when you have people's perception and they don't know you, they only know what they see. And of course that's whittled down, you know, everything is, happens in the editing room. So they can't show everything. Also the people that are making noise on social media are not me, meaning I am a fan of the show. I watch the show, but I'm not going on social media to trash you guys. I'm like a fan. The people who are making the noise are like the trolls. Yes. So when you only hear from the trolls, it's exhausting, I think. Yes. Yes. It's like I'm not going on and like commenting on the stuff. 
the people who are saying negative things are, There's which also, is hard, I think. We've talked about this a, a ton of times on this show where, okay, we do a podcast and so people will comment, but it's not, they'll just comment once in a while, like the podcast as it exists, but it's almost like you guys are treated almost like zoo animals in some cases where it's like, we can treat, like you're a different type of person to comment. Like they would never come into our DMs or t- some, sometimes they do, but rarely and say a lot of the things that they feel at liberty to say to people that are on reality TV. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I have to say, I've never, ever come across someone in person that's That's ever, ever been anything but so sweet and kind and so on. And even, listen, I decided a few years ago, you know, simply for my own mental health and really to stay grounded and in the real world, um, I had to compartmentalize. Yeah. You know, going from a private person to a public person, especially... Uh, via Housewives, you know, where there's so much judgment and and it's such a big show. Um, I needed to take a step back. So I don't read a lot of the crap. I don't, you know. Probably healthy because you don't. It's much healthier. For me, it's the only way. And that's my advice to people, especially even new people or, you know, even existing cast members when they're going through a difficult time and they're getting trashed. I'll say, don't read it. Just don't read it. Um I we had Mauricio on recently, and he, they've been going through a lot of stuff, and he's saying he, that's the same thing. He just doesn't read it. He's yeah. like, can't, can't read it. No. I, I think something to point out, too, about you is that, and I told you this off air, is that uh, you and I share hair and makeup. Yeah. And behind the scenes, all anyone has ever said about you to me is what a good mother you are and how lovely you are. The mother thing, though, I've heard multiple times from multiple different people, and it's interesting because you it's not that you don't see that you're a good mother on the show I just feel like they don't show that aspect as much as they could I know I agree and I've had so many people tell me that these are the kinds of things I think that has over the years it's it's hurt and I know you can't take it personally but it's a reality show right and My children are such a big part of my life. And they're so smart. They're so smart and sweet and cute. Her daughter has a cooking show. And how old is she? She has like this little cooking show that she cooks stuff. She, yeah, she had at four years old. Yeah, she's smart. Now now she's eight, but she, she did. Yeah, listen, I wish that, I wish that they did show that more. I do. The question is though, I guess for for a show like that would be, would it be successful, as successful as it is, if they showed a I lot of the I think they could pepper it in. I do. absolutely pepper it in. I think they could pepper it in. Get a little twist of I a, would like to see Phoenix making fajitas. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they could pepper it in. Just a little pepper oh, of absolutely. it. absolutely. You do know. You, do you also, I mean, as a, I'm maybe not the main target audience, but I tune in. I said, I, you know, probably my favorite. Has we been, know you tune yeah, in. Yeah, I tune in. <laughs> um, but do, do you think that as new cast members join or as people stay for long periods of time, it's kind of like you got to keep leveling it up each season to keep the audience guessing. Like if you say you guys just had like, Hey, we're going to all get together. No drama. Just relax. This well, season. you couldn't, you couldn't yeah, do that. Exactly. You know, the truth is, listen, the biggest question I get asked is, is it scripted? And I always say the same thing. I wish it would make, <laughs> it would make everyone's job so much easier. Yep. Um, you put eight strong, successful, opinionated women together, mm-hmm. and there's bound to be conflict. Now, it is a reality show. We are all aware that it is a show. Nothing is fake. Nothing is, you know, we are adults. We make decisions. Is it dialed up a bit? Sure. Would, you know, would somebody go on and on and on about something, you know, maybe if the cameras weren't rolling? Maybe not. Sutton, Sutton's exhaust. Esophagus. <laughs> Sutton's exhaust. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> perfect point. That was a that was a long storyline. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. You that was. It. I know. It was. I mean, it was like, I couldn't believe how long it went on. I know. I know. And sometimes when things get dragged out too much, it's like, okay, you know, we need to move on from this. With everything that you went through showing PS, how do you say? PTSD. PTSD. That was very raw. Was that something that you naturally were just comfortable to share? Were you like hesitant to share it? Did you want to share I it? I didn't even have it. I didn't have a chance to think about it. It was just so quick. Lauren, we were in London as a family for my niece and nephew's wedding. And 
production called me and said, you know, you need to come back early because we're filming. So I had to leave PK and come back with the kids two days early. I wasn't supposed to be home. Um, I filmed that first day and that night I put the kids to bed and that's when it happened. We had just started filming. That was my second day of filming. My second day of filming was the day after the home invasion. At that point, first of all, I had believed that my kids and I were going to be killed. I believed there was a moment where I thought to myself, this is it. And God, I mean, listen, I've got, yeah, it's it's beyond terrifying. But and for coming out parents, of it, it's like you can't imagine. Like I mean, imagine the fear for yourself, but like thinking of your kids. It's the kids. Yeah. It's the kids. You know, I can handle anything, but when it comes to my kids, sure. Also, they were five and seven years old. Yeah, they don't so know. So they yeah. were so sweet and innocent, and just even them waking up and seeing the men in the house. You know, as they're collecting things, one of the guys stood behind me the whole time. You know, with masks and the whole thing. And thank God, a million times. They didn't wake up. They still, they don't know anything about it. So when I woke up that morning, and I mean, there were helicopters above my house, I thought, you know, how on earth does the whole world know? I mean, it happened four hours before the police had just left. Clearly, this, you know, news travels very fast. Um, Some of the girls on the cast raced to my house. It was eight o'clock in the morning. And, you know, production obviously had given me the choice you know, either I was going to film or not. But at that point, they had already taken so much. I had already committed to the season. So what do I do? Do I let them take my livelihood too? And what am I going to do? I mean, I felt, first of all, like I won the lottery because my kids were not only alive, they were safe. They weren't, they didn't wake up and see anything. I wasn't worried about all of the things that scared the living daylights, scared the living daylights out of me the night before. So I thought I've got to keep moving forward, especially for them, as if everything is normal, knowing full well that I had to process and all of the things that, you know, were going to happen after a night like that. So I agreed to continue filming and I really put one foot in front of the other and just, um, you know, pushed forward. But when I decided to do that, much like, you know, when you do a show like this, you are agreeing to put it all out there. That's, that's the nature of it. You know, there's, there really isn't, you can't kind of pick and choose what you want to share. And that, this happened. So I had to live in the moment and be as I am. And I was, and I don't regret that for one second. I can't even like spend the night in a hotel room by myself. I cannot I mean, I got scared the other night. I was by myself. I cannot even imagine having my kids there by myself. Like, does that make you like want to move out of LA? I mean, or is it not? Is LA not the problem? Like, what what did you even feel after that happened? Petrified. Yeah, petrified. But I had twenty four hour security, so it was. I was. I felt the safest in my house, and you had it after it happened. Correct. So after all this happened, you were like, I need, I, I mean, so would I. I oh, need 24 yeah. hour security. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, when I tell you the, the fears, especially in the very beginning, you know, there was waves. So I was very busy filming and I was very, very, very focused on making sure the kids did not know anything. And they still know nothing you said. No. Wow. I, yeah. I have protected them. You know, don't Amazing. forget, they're not on social media. They're, they just turned eight and 10, my kids, and they're homeschooled. So I've had the benefit of being able to kind of protect them from it. That's amazing. Absolutely. It's amazing. And that to me was the single most important thing. I just, I wanted them, I wanted to preserve their innocence. I didn't want them to have these fears. Whatever mommy was going through, I'll get through it, you know, And, and I had a really rough time with it. And I'm a strong, tough person. My father is an Israeli paratrooper. I mean, I was raised a certain way. Um, I didn't expect to have a lot of the post-trauma fears and anxieties that I had. But I think you handled it 
I have to be honest, if that happened to me, like, I think you handled it, like, very well. And there were some moments that I think there could have been given more grace through. I mean, that was, that was to me, that was one of the biggest traumas that we have seen on all the franchises. It was not a joke. Your kids were involved. Like, yes. it, it almost was like, to talk about stuff, Sutton's esophagus for... Six million. It would like if I felt like it needed like, yeah, more grace. Yes. Well, you know the the other thing is we, had, you know, it kind of, it kind of the story itself. Even, you know, it didn't really. Not a lot of it was shown or covered. You know, we right. film a lot. They just want bites. They want the headline. You know, and that listen, I understand, and that's fine. Um. And I, I, I had a lot of, you know, exaggerated startle response. Like I was, I felt like I changed. One thing that we take very seriously in our family is probiotics. I do not screw around. And that is because I've had a microbiologist come on the podcast three times and talk about how important it is that we get that daily probiotic and how good it is for the gut. We recently had the founder of Just Thrive on the podcast with a microbiologist, and they broke down again all of the benefits that you can see by taking a daily probiotic. The one that I take actually sustains the trip to the gut. So most of them on the market don't even arrive at your gut. So you want to make sure you really do your research when it comes to getting a probiotic. I also like Just Thrive probiotics because I can travel with them. You don't have to keep them in the refrigerator, which is so nice. What I'll do with my kids is I'll even sprinkle some in their smoothie. If you're looking for something else to go with your probiotic, they have this product called Just Calm, and it's a psychobiotic, and it's very synergistic with a probiotic. It's basically just going to calm your nervous system. So those are the two products that I would recommend on Just Thrive. Right now, you can go to justthrivehealth.com and use promo code SKINNY. On that note, if you're ready to take control and live your healthiest life yet, you can get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit justthrivehealth.com and use promo code SKINNY. And while you're there, check out their other clinically backed products. Take control with Just Thrive. A little habit stack that I do every single night to wind down is I spray lavender magnesium on my body. Sometimes I spray it on my feet even. And I'll do it after I do my skincare routine. It takes like literally two seconds. I'll spray 15 sprays. The brand that I use is Symbiotica. It's a topical magnesium. So it just goes straight into the bloodstream. I'm obsessed with this for calming my nervous system and also balancing my mood. So many of us are low on magnesium. So this is like a really great, easy way to get it in our systems. I'll even spray it on my kids' feet. I have told all my friends and family to get this magnesium just because it's such a lovely addition. It's obviously non-toxic. You spray it on the body and you immediately get that boost of magnesium. And while you're on the Symbiotica site, I would definitely recommend checking out their liposomal glutathione. This is the master antioxidant and I will not drink alcohol. Fun fact, I will not unless I have my packet of Symbiotica glutathione. This protects the body against free radicals and maintains healthy cellular function. They have a B12 that you squirt in your mouth. My kids like that one too. And they even have a vitamin D with a K2. There's so much integrity that goes into their products and they're very serious about ingredients. Start your subscription today. You can save 15% off your subscription with our code SKINNY. You're going to go to symbiotica.com and use code SKINNY on your subscription order. That's symbiotica.com code SKINNY. I I bet you, I bet you had knots in your stomach and I bet you were, I mean, scared to go in a dark room. I mean, there's multiple things. Also, the aspect of the kids, it's a whole thing. You could, people could think they would behave in a certain way when that happens. This is like a total tangent story, but when I used to live in Arizona alone, I had some people break into a house when I was in there sleeping. Wow. Luckily for, in my case, I don't think they thought I was home. Yeah. And in Arizona, the gun laws are pretty favorable. So there was not, not that I went out like Rambo or anything, but there was uh, there was an instance where they realized I was home and just ran out and left and police came and everything. But I never I didn't have it the step further, which you had, which is somebody actually then 
coming and confronting you and taking. It's so wild. It was literally like people came in and then just. Can ran you imagine out. as a woman no, but, too that has no protection? But my point is, is it scared the living daylights out of me? Yeah, and exactly. Nothing even happened. It was just people came in and then ran away. Yes. Nothing got stolen. Nothing got taken. I didn't get touched. And it's still jarring. And it still freaked me the fuck out. And I remember waking up the next day and then like having trouble sleeping consistently because I'm like, well, is somebody going to come back? Are they going to come in? And again, nothing even happened to me. It was just like, come in and leave. So I can only imagine you kick that up a notch. Something does happen to you. Stuff does get taken and your children are there and you're going through that. Like, it was traumatic for me as a grown man and nothing happened outside of someone coming in and out. I can only imagine not to like gender anybody, but Yes. People coming in to a home where a woman's sleeping alone with her children. With her children. There's no way you, I mean, if you weren't rattled from that, I would say, hey, maybe something's going on. Well, even more than rattled. And, you know, the thing that, and again, and I don't want to spend too, too much time on, you know, the home invasion and PTSD because, you know, you hear the rumblings and I've heard this like, oh, we're tired of the PTSD and da, da, da. da." I'm tired of the freaking PTSD. But, with regards to the show, you know, when you're, I was very open and very honest and vulnerable and put it all out there. And listen, what, you know, how the show is edited and who decides what and so on, they know best. And I, I'm still going to be dealing with what I'm dealing with. And I did a lot of work. Um, you know, I had a really difficult year. And then when I started to feel a little bit better and stronger. And, you know, I had not left my house on my own. This was about 14 months after the home invasion. I don't blame you. I had not let, I was always with somebody. And I I changed my life. I structured it where, you know, the things I used to do, I wasn't doing anymore. But that was, that was where I felt comfortable and how I felt comfortable. Keep in mind also, for me, my kids, there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do to protect my kids. Nothing. And I mean, nothing. I can hold my, I can hold it together for them. That's just the way I'm, the way I'll always be. You know, it's that, um, that real protective mama bear instinct that is in me. And that's what was, that is what, that is what is the most important thing to me. So, I hadn't left the house on my own. I did 14 months later. I went to the bank. This is on the show, so I don't know if you've seen it. And I don't want to. But I was followed, unbeknownst to me. And then my handbag was stolen. But the thing is that... That triggers it again. Exactly. Yeah. And it triggered it in such a way where it, it was like directly after the home invasion. And so... That I struggled with even more. And Michael, if, if you don't don't know this part, they stole $10,000, right? Yes. Yeah, so it was Christmas Eve. And there's a lot of things I want to clear up too, Lauren. Go. This is why you I'm clear so... clear it up. Clear no, it up on I'm the podcast. I'm so happy to be here yes. because, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go out there. I'm not of the nature that I, every little thing that someone says, I'm there online saying, no, da, 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 because... I don't believe in it. You're going to be chasing your tail, and sometimes you're giving air. I mean, you're to not trying to bullshit. respond to every kind of exactly. comment. That's, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, waste your capacity. Yeah, right. uh, totally. Exactly. So, um, this whole thing. Why? Why walking around with ten thousand dollars in? Why walk around with ten thousand dollars in your bag? This was Christmas Eve. Everyone was busy. My assistant was doing various things. No one was home. I went to the bank. I wanted to get some cash out because I wanted to give some bonuses, and I stopped off at a store to get some boxed Christmas cards because I didn't know if I had enough at the house. To put the bonuses in. Exactly. Makes total sense. Th- this is this is the truth. This is the real story. Why these things aren't, you know, explicitly shown, you know, I, I don't understand. And when I say shown, forgive me. Um, well, I guess like the majority to play devil's advocate or just th- like when they hear $10,000, that sounds like an extreme amount to, I guess, most people. But for me, when I when I heard you telling the story, and I didn't, I'm not aware of the storyline, like it makes sense. You have all sorts of people you're working with that you want to give a cash bonus to on Christmas. Like, right. That, that, that's, that's common. I just think maybe the amount is what is sticking in people's head. Yes. Maybe some people like 500 or 1,000 I think 10, people don't realize, though, how much it takes to run what you guys are doing. It's $10,000 makes sense in cash to have to give it no, 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 of during course. Christmas. Yes, well, I'm just saying, but that's what the amount is, I think, what's sticking in people's minds. Like, who has $10,000? But what $10, you're saying is that there but... wasn't context given to the story. Thank you. Yeah. 
you, you know, I it this way. say that there's like 50 people working in this business. Imagine if I had $500 it's, to bonus those 50 people, people are like, what I a know, cheapskate. But it's you know almost I mean? like the, there's, um, power of insinuation without giving, without giving the contest, it almost makes her look bad. It, it allows for, um, chatter. Yeah. yeah. And narratives, mm-hmm. you know, to be invented where anyway, I, I digress. So, um, so that I underestimated how much that had affected me. And again, you know, I'm, I was always a very strong person, you know, and my father raised me mind over matter. So you can overcome. And there were things that I couldn't control. They were like a physiological response triggers that would send my heart into like a rapid, um, you know, rapid beating, you know, anxiety, just things that I, I couldn't control. It was like as if my mind and my body were not connected. So we had started filming and here we are a year and a half after the home invasion. And I'm in the same place that I was post home invasion, which was, it was a struggle for me. But for as far as the show's concerned, it's kind of like, well, wait a minute, you know, you're back here. So when I started the new season, you know, because I was in not in a great place, you know, because of the second robbery, um, I was fed up and I just I wanted to I really wanted to feel better, feel stronger and feel more like myself. And that was my journey. You know, my storyline, I guess, if if you want to put it in, in show's terms. Now, at the same time, you know, unfortunately, PK and I were having a really difficult time in our marriage. I, you know, when you're not yourself, of course, I'm, con- there's, you know, two people. When you're not, when you're not good in a marriage, it's never one person. I, is I it? had postpartum depression. I know exactly. It's like, they want you to be who you, who you are. And you're like, I need, I, I need a minute. I'm in fog. Yes. So, uh, and I, that's not the same thing, but like, he wanted me to like be my old self. And I was like, I, I yeah. I need more clarity. Yes. So I understand when you're you're going through something and he wants you to be like old Dorit and you're like you've gone through this thing and it's like you almost can't. Right. Definitely a big part of it. I also I needed him there. I mean this is the past. Thank goodness and I'm I'm only touching upon it because with relation to, you know, I said it's it's nice to be here with you guys and to be able to clear things up you know, have a voice, answer some of the things that people, you know, that's out there. The narratives. Exactly. What are the the biggest narratives that you Yeah, what do you want to clear up? You go clear anything up. So, um, well, thank you guys. Like I said, I mean, this seat is so comfortable. I might need to, I might need to make this, you know, more often. (laughs) Um, But no, so when I, when I started the season, you know, I was very open and honest and I had said, listen, PTSD and the home invasion, it took a big toll on our marriage. And PK and I went through the roughest year that we had had in our marriage. And we really, you know, we didn't have years like that. We didn't have times like that. So it was very different and rare. And you want to protect your family. But when you're on a show, like I said, you know, you you can't hide these things. And we both agreed that we were, you know, going to be very open and honest. When we started, we had already pressed reset. So we were already in a better place. I was focused on working on the anxieties and and all of the things that came with the home invasion. And I started to do things to really to get stronger and better, to crop my God classes. I went to the gun range. All of this was filmed, you know, and this was the story because I, I wanted to come out. I want to come out better than I was before. When you are a certain person, you go through something traumatic and it takes the life out of you. You know, to be able to come out, to be able to figure out how to get better mentally, physically, all of the things. For me, that was something not only that I wanted to do for myself, but especially when I'm doing it with, the world witnessing it, those that reached out to me when they had their own trauma, it was, you know, they, I had so many messages for people saying, you know, thank you. Thank you for being so open and so vulnerable because it's helped me. And, you know, 
there's a responsibility, I suppose, that I felt and feel that especially being on a reality show, that given what I've been through, being able to show how you can knock it on the head and how you can pick yourself up and how you can get better, you know, was really important to me. What is things at the reunion that surprised you where you were like, whoa? Well, I think, you know, there's there's a few with regards to the home invasion. And, you know, since we're talking about that, I think what hurt the most was, um, you know, the comment that Garcelle had made in a confessional when she had, you know, intimated that the home invasion was. I don't know, not real or whatever she was intimating when she said, you know, the only jewelry I've seen is the jewelry that Dorit was wearing after the home invasion. And I mean, these girls are with me. You know, I know she doesn't believe that it's not real. I I don't actually believe that she thinks it's not real. So why do you think she says it? Is this like a soundbite or? I don't know if it is to play into the, you know, kind of narrative. Yeah, but. That, to me, goes a step too far. Mm. Much like when Erica had said that to her son. That's a step too far. I guess at this point, how do you guys... I mean, we're talking about these... Do you consider these steps too far? But what is a step too far in the world that you're in? Because sometimes as a viewer watching this, a lot of it... Like, I I think about just... You mentioned normal day-to-day interactions. Like, a lot of it is a step too far, but maybe it's heightened on TV. But where's the line where you're like, whoa? I wish I... Listen, you know, they say... um, Husbands and and kids are off limits. I agree with that. I think for me personally, it was just because it was something that affected me in such a way that for me, it felt like it really hit hard, you know? And then, of course, it incites this um, weird chatter that somehow this has been fabricated or PK created it or all of these really wild accusations that, I mean, there's proof. You know, and then when you don't actually, you know, the audience is only going to believe what they see. That's the way it works. So a lot of the things that I had done with regards to, you know, trying to get better mentally um, were taken out. And I understand, right. you you know, you not everything is going to make the show. A lot gets cut out. Sure. But, you know, I, like I said, I did the Krav Maga classes and I had therapy sessions. and But it became more about, just PK and I, and that was the main focus. So of course, if the audience is not seeing what I'm going through and what I'm doing and the conversations I'm having, you know, with the head of my security who took me to a gun range and triggers. I mean, we were in Vegas and Crystal came up from behind and it, you know, sent me into such a panic. All of these things, you know, it's as simple as if you don't see it, does it really exist? So the audience doesn't have a chance to see what I'm going through. And so therefore, when someone makes a comment questioning whether or not it's real. When they've seen the day-to-day of you. Yeah, but also it's easier to jump on that bandwagon of, well, wait a minute, you know, how, you know, what is she going through really? Because there really hasn't been that much, um, you know, coverage. You know, there isn't. And from what I hear of, which I get, you know, the show, people tune into the show. It's escapism. They want to see the glamour. They want to see the arguments. They they don't want such a heavy subject. I understand that. But the good news is anyway, that I'm a lot better than I was in the last couple of years, both in our marriage and also myself. You know, I've done a lot of work and finally feel like there's that life that was inside of me before is coming back starting new businesses, taking on new projects, feeling that um, some of that, you know, panic, everyday panic or worry or anxieties that I've got more control over. And I think some of it has to do with probably a little bit of time and distance and doing a lot of work. And at least for me, even though, you know, you don't see it on the show, me personally feel a lot better from where I've come. That's, that is amazing. Yes. It's almost like you got to the other side. Yes. Getting there. Definitely. But definitely, definitely have gotten on the other side and looking forward to being only on 
the other side. Well, it, takes, that makes it sense. sounds like it's taken a lot of work to get there. Absolutely. What are you working on now? It, maybe you can give us a tease. I hope that it's something with fashion. <laughs> I, you know, Lauren, I don't want to say too much. Okay. Um, but I will say that I've got the spark back and it feels so good because it feels like it's been, I haven't seen it or felt it in a long time. And to have it back makes me feel more like myself. And that's what I've been waiting for and wanting and working towards. So I'm very grateful for that. Now, there are a few things that I do want to clear up. Please. Um, I saw, um, and I, I wonder too, because I'm always curious if people see things. I don't know if because I'm in, because it's about me, if it comes on my feed. So Crystal was on a podcast recently and she had said that um, I made everybody wait at the reunion for two hours. Have you seen that? I did see that on TikTok. Okay. I wouldn't have asked you about it though, because I, I forgot that. Yeah. Remember, I just told you I forgot that I see stuff. Also, yes. Lauren, but when you just brought Lauren's it up. late all the time. So. I, I, well, listen, I am I too. Can't, I'm late as well, but I'm this working is, on it. Same. People We're working really progress. I know. But same. I, I did see that, but I wouldn't have asked you that question because I forgot. But I think this is a great opportunity for you to clear it up. You know, this is one of those things that. It's a bold-faced lie, and she knows it. And in fact, I was able to see a clip because the, the, the podcast was filmed, so I actually saw her telling the story because it was posted everywhere. And I thought to myself, you know, I've, I'd heard rumblings that she likes to make up stories, but to watch it, I thought, I can't believe how proficient she is at lying. She knows full well, much like the entire cast and crew, that I had a wardrobe wardrobe malfunction. The small zipper on my dress that closes the dress broke. And the brilliant wardrobe team had to sew me into the dress. Her, into, her saying that I made everybody wait two hours because I was doing TikToks or in glam or what have you is a lie. The TikToks that I did, and you can even see in the TikTok, it's dark, was after the reunion. And the the first part of the TikTok where I'm in my trailer in jeans was probably even before half of the cast even got to set. And they even show in the reunion when everyone's arriving. So um, I think Sutton was, you know, almost an hour. Uh, she arrived almost an hour after everyone else. Whatever it is, you know, People remind me. Why do you think that that was said? I think... Because people maybe are mad after the reunion, so they feel like they need to like... I think Crystal is... She was upset about a comment that I made, um, which was never intended to hurt her or, um, you know, to be derogatory in any way. But I think she's... Crystal is trying desperately to salvage another year um whatever her game is i don't know and and the interesting thing about it is as i'm watching her bit by bit try to you know make all of these comments i think to myself um you know she's told me a lot of things you know I, i'm i'm never going to share what she shared in confidence but it's very interesting seeing how she's behaving especially when she's, um, you know, aligned with her so-called best friends on the show. And yet she's had the worst things you can imagine to say about them behind their backs. You know, that combined with seeing her making up these lies, it really, for me anyway, shows me the kind of person that she is. So what, for the next season, what, what is that like? Are you like, get away from me or you have to film with her like what are you gonna do I mean if she comes back I will just like I'm doing right now say it to her face yeah absolutely how do you guys maintain professional and personal friendships and forgive each other with all the stuff that you guys go through together Michael I'm such a forgiving person I can get past anything. I don't like to be in a negative space. Sure. 
obviously, you know, when you're really hurt by a friend or they've done something that's really bad, it takes longer. And you have to, you know, two people have to want to make up and it has to be genuine. You know, this is this is what the show, the nature of the show. I mean, there are you have arguments and you make up and it ebbs and flows. Yeah, the ebbs and flows. And I like when there's a little bit of scratching, you know, people do like the drama and people do like but they also like to see us make up. They do like they like a resolution. It's yes. interesting. It's, yeah, I think people don't like the continuous like, hey, this is like just an ongoing. I know. Nasty fight. I selfishly and maybe you guys already have want you and Kyle to make up because I just like your friendship so much. I, know. I think it's a sweet. Fr- you guys will make up. Yeah. I hope to see I, that as a viewer. Yes. I listen. I hope so, too. Um, I've been I feel really, really hurt by Kyle now. She'll obviously say the same. And with regards to the text message, that's another thing that we can clear up here. Um, and it's sad. It really is sad that Kyle and I have reached this place because I would have never, never thought and never wanted to be in this place with Kyle, truly. Um, obviously, I didn't leak it to the press. And I can say that here and now. And give, give Michael not. context of what you're talking about. Okay. So... Um, so Kyle and I, we have a friendship. Very good friendship, it seems to me. And But, you know, unbeknownst to me, she publicly declared that I exaggerated our friendship. So not even to me, but told the world that the friendship is a lot more important to me than it is to her. It's mm. the way I took it anyway. I don't know if, you're, if you read that headline or... Or saw that um, your whole feed's going to be Real Housewives now because we're talking into your phone. I love it. Oh no, no, my no. goodness! But I'm, I'm close enough and caught and like to and I'm you know and have enough mutual friends and adjacencies to be familiar. But I'm not in every detail. I'll just be honest with you. you yeah, know, I'm not no, no. Kyle, I completely understand. I, you, uh, Kyle sent you a text message. Well, let, so I'll, I'll yes, back up. Ex- so yes. we, um, I will say the entire season, and I and I'm not part of. I came into the season. Kyle and I had had texted each other a few times. We hadn't seen each other leading up to filming. I was going through some stuff. She was going through some stuff. She has a small group of friends that they're very close. They're very tight. They exercise like crazy together. And they, they you know, they do things that I don't do, like get up at 5 a.m. and <laughs> run, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, needless to say, she still has always had those friendships and, you know, we've we've had a very close friendship. But when um, when we started filming, there was just I felt a distance, you know, and it just didn't feel the same like it always was. But I know that she was going or I felt like she was going through some things. She wasn't open and honest with me and sharing um and that's fine. I'm not somebody that pushes either. You know, I'm here for if a friend wants to share with me, you know, I want them to feel like they can always come to me. I'll always be there for them. I don't like to push too much. That said, we're also on a show. Kyle has been doing it longer than everyone. She knows very well that you can't do the show when there's something going on, especially if it's in the press. They are going to want production wants you to ask And if you're, you know, just like in life, if you're with a friend and you see that things are, you know, they're not themselves or it looks like something is going on, I'm going to say to a friend of mine, is everything okay? Is everything good with you? I tried many times to get together with Kyle before we started filming. Um, We never managed to, she was traveling and um, I just felt like a a distance and that's fine. So we were filming and um, things were okay you know, as far as I understood, but I didn't feel like I said that closeness to Kyle. And that was pretty much throughout the entire season. Um, She started to open up a bit in this season about the troubles she was having with Mauricio. I wasn't aware of any of the things that were going on with her. And I wish I- This is before the general public knows anything or after? This is before the general public. Okay. Okay. And you know, it's really difficult for me to actually remember. I don't even know if there was- Oh, there was speculation because, but the speculation, and this is how ridiculous it is. There was speculation because Kyle was photographed. um, She was papped without her wedding ring, but she was 
she had just come from the gym. She's in an all a gym outfit. She doesn't have any jewelry on. I don't on. wear my ring to the gym either. It's what? the most yeah. ridiculous thing That's ever. Yeah. I, and some yeah. of the girls. I don't wear my ring to the uh, to the gym either. You better staple that ring to your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Glue it to you, Michael. Yeah, bitch. Um, <laughs> no, I felt actually really bad for Kyle because the reality is, um, you know, some of the girls were making a big issue about this picture saying that, you know, is everything OK with you and Mo? Because, you know, you were seen without a wet wedding ring, which I mean, she was very clearly coming back from the gym with no jewelry. You know, that wasn't an indication. Um, and also, when I had asked Kyle in the show, um, you know, is everything okay? It was just her and I. Obviously, the cameras are rolling, but just her and I. And I had asked, and I didn't push her. I said, listen, I just want you to know, you know, I'm here for you. And when a, a few of the other girls at the weed dinner had... Um, approached Kyle about it, it was in a far less concerning or friend-like way. And Kyle had made a comment in the press about being upset that I asked her on camera about her marriage or what was going on with her when she knows full well, not only that, that of course, everyone is going to expect production, the network, everyone. I mean, if something is going on and someone doesn't ask, you know, it's, it's like, what are you hiding? Plus a friend asks a friend what's going on, but she was making little comments like that. But meanwhile, you know, she makes a comment when Sutton and Garcelle had brought it up at the weed dinner. She said, you know, if they had asked me in a concerning way, I wouldn't mind, but that's exactly the way I had asked her and she had a problem with it. So I think she was harboring something. I didn't know what was what it was exactly because she wasn't telling me. Um, then we finish filming and we're fine. And we go for dinner and, you know, it felt like we almost um, kind of got back to where we were almost after we start. We finished filming. And then um, I when I'm watch what happens live and Andy asked me, Andy Cohen asked me, um, do you feel like your friendship with Kyle has changed since her friendship with Morgan? Something like that. And I was being very honest and say, and I said, you know, I feel like the closer she got to Morgan, the further she got from me. So that upset her in such a way. And I still don't really understand why, but she just decided to not speak to me. And she was enraged. I sent her a really nice text message, um, you know, when I had seen some things in the press about her and Mo, just that I was thinking about her and, um, you know, I'd seen her daughter and it was a lovely message. She didn't even answer it. She just completely blanked me. So now there's months where she didn't respond to a text. She's clearly got an issue. Then I see that she goes out into the public and she says um, that I exaggerated our friendship. That was as hurtful as it can possibly be. I mean, for one, you're telling me that I've made up this friendship, you know, and she reduced it all to production had put a picture of us on a trip. And one of the the, one picture that they that they grabbed from somewhere well from somewhere was a cast trip. So she reduced our friendship to um you know, we only went on one trip and Dorit posted a picture that was a cast trip, which is none of any of the things that I do. I know this is kind of probably difficult to follow because when it comes to production and so on. Um, but anyway, lo and behold, just before the reunion, and you know, the reunion is where you discuss everything. You know, we are... This is like, let's get it all out in the open air exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. And here I am, I've got a real issue with Kyle having publicly said that I've exaggerated our friendship. I mean, aside from being extremely hurt about it, it's like, what the fuck? Sorry, can I swear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's been done here before. Don't worry. So the day before the reunion, I get a text message from Kyle. And it is, to me, it was very calculated and very manipulative. And it really, really upset me. You don't respond to a message I mean, you went publicly and said that our friendship is, you know, not that big and and not that great. And then the day before the reunion, you send me a message and it was 
saying like, oh, you know, um, let's not mention anything here and let's stick together. And the things, I mean, it's out there now. So, you know, you can see it. And it just felt like an even bigger slap in the face. And I just thought to myself, listen, there's only so much you can, I'm not a doormat and I'm not a wallflower. And yes, I have a kind heart, but I really care about you. And I really believe that we're friends. This is not the way you treat a friend. So there was obviously no way I was going to go into the reunion and not address the issues that we're having in our friendship and what the hell was going on. And for her to even think, especially after doing the show for so long and also having a standard where she's always the first to say to everybody that this is the place to do it. And, you know, you have to talk about it. You know, she there's like two sets of rules, one for her and one for everybody else. And there's a point where it's just not OK, you know, and I'm hoping that you I'm guys tune into this reunion come, now. To come back together, though, on the next season. I like to meet people I hope so too. and then yeah. watch the shows because I feel more connected You'd already now to watched it. The no, but shows. I now, but I like to meet the people. He's going to go Google in. text message. Yeah, I'm going to be in there. Now, listen. Well, the, the, the upsetting thing is, listen, I discussed it with Erica in the trailer before the reunion. And someone leaked the text message. It was not me. I can tell you that right here, right now. Who was it? What does it rhyme with? I have absolutely no idea, but I shouldn't say I have no idea. I don't know who did, but I have an idea. Got it. And it's not a single person. I would say it's it's either, listen, it's going to be the powers that be because they're the ones that had the text message. Don't you feel like this all comes out with all this anyway? Like eventually everyone's going to know. You and Am PK, I to solve it, on the next podcast episode, you and PK need to come on as him and her. Maybe you and Kyle will make up. I am manifesting you to have the best season yet. Well, I can tell you what I hope for next season. Tell us. I, I, I really hope that Kyle and I can sit down with or without cameras. This is what I would hope and wish for Kyle and I. I would like for Kyle and I to sit down have a genuine, honest, open conversation. There's a lot of hurt. She's got these ideas that, um, you know, I didn't deliberately do anything to hurt her. It's, it's impossible for her to think that I would not discuss the things that she's doing to hurt me in a forum where that is exactly what we're supposed to do. I think that she'll under when you have this conversation, it's you guys will be able to see each other's point of view. And also, Lauren, the other thing is the showing a a private text message. It didn't have any information, anything that Kyle confided in confided in me. I would never share. Never. No matter what. This was a message that had strictly had to do with our friendship and, and the reunion and the reunion. Exactly. And she, you know. She has shown messages to private messages to production, cast members, and so on. And I've been very hurt in the past. And their answer was, you know, I was angry or upset at the, at, you know, in the moment. So even, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You can't, you can't have a certain standard, but yet you don't adhere to it. Can you come back on when your next season airs, hopefully manifesting you guys have made up with PK and we can get his take too on it? Yes, absolutely. We've covered a lot of ground. We've covered a lot of ground. I think you cleared. I think. And I feel like I'm like, I've kept up with everything. Now I'm in, I know all the juice. I got all the tea. I'm fully up to speed. I'm going to watch a reunion. Where can everyone find your Instagram? Pimp yourself out so we can go follow your fashion and see what you're going to launch. You are very sweet. Thank you. Dorit Kemsley. I think my Insta is just Dorit Kemsley. I'm sure Isn't they'll it? be able to find you. Dorit, I want you to come back on the podcast after the next season airs. And uh, I want to do a him and her. Let's I'd do love it. that. Okay. I'd love that. Yeah. He was, having r- he was having a rough time being in the room without a mic. I know. Oh, was, he was? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Lauren, it's I, not. I, get, I relate to it. I, I, I could see him. He was like, I, he's, he had to step out because he wanted to jump on. Well, yes. And also, PK and I, I, I'm not used to him and I being in the same room and <laughs> us not 
talking next yeah. time. Yes, next time, next time. Absolutely. Dorit, I've wanted you on this podcast for years since you've been on the show. Thank you for coming on. Open invite for next time. Thank you time. for doing this. You know, Thank I told you. my mom, she said, hey, who are you interviewing this week? And I and I mentioned everyone we're interviewing and I mentioned you and she was most excited. His mom's very God. stylish and she has a tailor. So that's where oh, he gets it from. Oh my God. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, listen, next time I, I look forward to it and we'll discuss business and a lot of other things. And, and definitely fashion. Oh, yes. and mommyhood. Yes. We will. Next yes. time. Thank you, Dorit. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.